This is the second video in our series showing you how to use the CDC Excel tool for thematic analysis. In this video, we will review the first planning steps you will take prior to collecting information, how to track information as you're collecting it, and how to select a coding scheme in the tool. First up is the analysis planning sheet that you should use when preparing to collect qualitative feedback data from communities. The first question that you will want to ask yourself on this sheet is what do we hope to learn from this data collection? Here you will write down the questions that have led you to identify the need for this data collection. Next, consider how this knowledge might be used for action. In this column, you can list ways in which this information will be used to improve response efforts. A very important consideration that goes along with this question is to identify in the next column who can implement this action. Here you should identify the pillars, teams, partners, and agencies who can take action in response to the findings of this analysis. And finally, you will describe current communications with the people from the previous column. This is important for determining whether these groups will be ready to act on the information provided from the community feedback. It is also likely a good practice to be in contact with these groups as early as possible in the planning process. And again, if possible, to involve them in the collection and analysis phase as well. Once you've planned out your analysis questions, you are ready to begin collecting information. You will likely be incorporating information from multiple sources and will want to keep track of the collection details as well as whether the transcripts have been formatted and coded. To do this, you can use the sheet titled Transcript Log Sheet. We have provided several pre made columns where you can record information about the data being collected. I'll walk through some of the pre-built columns here and show you the information that will automatically update while filling out this table. The first column called file ID will automatically count starting from one to provide a file ID for each of your rows. And you can feel free to update this column with your own ID if you like. This will mostly be used later in the process to help match information from this table to information in the coding workspace. The next column is the collection date where you can record the date on which the information was collected. As you can see, when you fill out this column, the total number of transcripts uh, row on the top will update. So now it's showing that we have four transcripts or notes being recorded in this log. The next two columns have drop-down menus in the first column is a list of type of events that you can choose from, including focus groups, social media posts, and complaint boxes, among others, as sources of where your information has come from. The second column, um, you can choose whether the information is a full transcript of the events or if the texts are notes from the event. This next column asks how many people um, the information was collected from. So for example, how many people were in your focus group? And you'll see that when we update this number of participants column, the total number of participants up here is also auto updated. So this 25 is counting the total number of participants that we've logged on this sheet. You may also want to track the file name that the text is being stored in for organizational purposes. These next two columns also include drop-down menu, where you can record whether you have formatted the transcript to be imported into the tool in this one, and whether you have completed the coding. And again, as you can see, as you change the values in these rows, the percent formatted and percent coded columns above will also auto-update. Finally, we have included a column to include information about who the participants were. The final topic we will review in this video is how to collect a coding, how to select a coding scheme. Contained in the tool are three versions of the coding workspace, pivot tables and thematic analysis sheets, with, which have been set up to use three different coding schemes, an epidemic coding scheme, an other health emergency coding scheme, and a blank scheme that people can input their own codes into. The codes for the epidemic and other health emergency schemes, as well as some additional schemes, are included in the appendix of the user guide. 
When you first open the tool, the coding workspace, pivot tables, and thematic analysis sheets will be hidden, and you will need to choose which coding scheme you would like to use. In order to do this, you will go to the select, select coding scheme sheet and select the button for the coding scheme you want to use. For example, when you select the epidemic coding scheme button, this automatically unhides all of these sheets down here that are set up to use the epidemic coding scheme. These sheets also include some fictitious data that shows how the tool can be used. You will automatically be brought to an overview of the coding scheme on this coding scheme sheet. There is also the option to rehide these sheets by selecting the change coding scheme button on the coding scheme, which will bring you back to the select coding scheme sheet. You can see here that the blank coding scheme page includes placeholders where you can input your own text. See the advanced op topic section of the user guide for detailed instructions on how to add your own codes or to change either of the two existing coding schemes. For the following videos, we will be using the epidemic coding scheme to provide examples. You can also find some brief example text under the other health emergency sheets. Once you feel comfortable using the tool, feel free to remove the example text from this tool. Now that you know how to select a coding scheme, in the next video we will re review how to prepare your text for coding.